This is a joint work with Mike uh, and also Mars Junger. Okay. Um, so let us first talk about what's quantum, uh, quantum Markov semi group. We consider M is a finite phonoin algebra equipped with a phase normal finite trace, and we normalize the trace of identity is one. And the quantum Markov semi group is a family of map TT indexed by a positive number T that satisfy for each T that semi group map TT is normal unital complete positive. And um, for any time TS, the composition of two semi group map equals to TS plus T. So the, the, this family of map forms a semi group. And for any operator in M, we want the semi group flow, which is the map sending the time T to TTX is weak star continuous. With this continuity, we can define the generator. Basically, we can write the semigroup as an exponential of the negative AT, A is the generator, which is defined as the negative derivative of the semigroup flow uh, at t equal to zero. And this object has many appearance um, in different areas. In the classical case, if we have M to be the random variable on a probability space, a quantum Markov semigroup is just a dual picture of a Markov process. For Markov process, we talk about transition probabilities. A quantum Markov, the, for the Markov semigroup, we are talking about the transition of random variables. In quantum physics, it's more often they consider the Fonoim algebra to be type one, which is a B of H. And that's models a special class of dispassive quantum system, open quantum system. And in operating algebra, quantum Markov semigroup arises naturally in many important examples, including group algebra, quantum groups, Q Gaussians, and so on. So in this talk, uh, we will restrict ourselves to semigroups that are symmetric and agotic. For symmetric, we mean the semigroup is self-adjoint with respect to the trace in the product. For agotic, we, we want to assume the fixed point space of semigroup is trivial, it's just a scalar. So the agoticity is for here is only to simplify the discussion. Basically, the result talk in this talk, um, mentioned in this talk, will works for some uh, general symmetric quantum mark of semigroup, but not necessarily agotic. Okay. So next thing is the modified log sub of inequality. Let's first say the state space of M is all the positive operator in M that has trace one, which corresponds to the normal states of the von Neumann algebra M. We say a semigroup satisfy non-modified log sub of inequality for, for positive parameter lambda, in short, we will just say lambda m LSI. If the following inequality holds, that's the two lambda, the parameter times trace row log row is less than trace a row, the generator acting on row times log row. This is what this is defined, this holds for every row which is defined. So what this inequality means it turns out that the left-hand side, if we ignore the two lambda as the parameter, is basically the entropy function the, denoted by H, which equals to trace row log row. And the right-hand side is called the Fisher information, which is essentially the negative derivative of the entropy along the semigroup flow at t equal to zero. Here for the semigroup flow, we mean that we have an initial state row and we apply semigroup to it, we write it as row t. So if we think semi, the entropy as a function along the semigroup flow, then the modified log of inequality is basically saying the derivative of this function is less than two times lambda, the function itself. Then by Grover lemma, this is says that the entropy, which is a positive quantity, exponential decay a long time. So the modified log sort of inequality is basically to say the entropy of this, of this quantum process decay exponentially fast. 
let's compare this property with other convergence property we are more familiar with. First, the modified log solving inequality can be used to imply the mixing time that's studied in probability. The mixing time is the smallest time such that for any initial distribution or initial states, the TT row is close enough to its equilibrium, which in our case is just the, the identity operator. And it's also known that the modified log of inequality implies the spectrum gap, which is treating the generator A as a positive linear operator, several joint positive operator on L2 space. And the spectrum gap is to say it has a strictly positive gap between the zero eigenvalue and is the first positive eigenvalue. And it's also known that the modified log solver inequality can be implied the transport cost inequality in optimal transport theory, which further can be used to derive concentration of measure. With so many implications, one would wonder how we prove this uh, modified soft inequality. One standard way is to use hypercontractivity estimates. So the hypercontractivity is uh, equivalent to the original gross original log of the inequality, which stated for L2 elements, and that's stronger than the modified log of the inequality, which state for L1, L1 elements or densities. So the hypercontractivity is a smoothing estimate that's saying the TT map is not only contraction from LP to LP, it's actually increasing the integrability from L2 to LP contractive such that for all P has this upper bounds. However, this approach fails in the non agotic case. Another approach uh, is from geometry is that when the underlying space has a positive rich curvature lower bound, which I will explain in detail in the next slide, if it has a positive rich curvature lower bound, that will imply modified log solve of inequality. And this program of functional inequality now has been generalized um, fully to the non commutative case. So this, this program shows a unified picture of the analysis of uh, the quantum mark of the classical mark of semigroup and the quantum mark of semigroup. So now let's take a further look into the rich lower bound condition. So we consider M is a compact Riemannian manifold equipped with the Riemannian metric G. Then the Laplace Beltrami operator is basically the square of the gradient operator, lambda. And is as a, the Laplace as a generator will generate the heat semi group. It was a famous result by Bakri Emery that if for a positive lambda, the rich curvature tensor, which is a bilinear form on the vector field, is always greater than lambda times the bilinear form introduced by the Riemannian metric G. This is called the rich curvature lower bounds by lambda. If this holds for positive lambda, then the semi-group will satisfy lambda modified log solver of inequality. This is a beautiful result that relates the analysis of his semi-group by the underlying geometry. It has been further extended to very general setting. First, uh, is a, is a, was a remarkable result by Strun, Lot, Vinali they extend this to metric measure space, which does not have a smooth structure. And their approach will further extend to by mass and abra to finite discrete classical space, which is just a Markov semigroup on finite set. And later by more recently by Rosie, Data, Kala, and Mass, they consider the quantum Markov semigroup on finite dimensional system algebra and more, and also by Verns, and it's extend this to finite from one algebra for symmetric semigroup. And the common idea in this work is like, they take an equivalent definition of the rich curvature lower bound by the so-called lambda geodesic convexity of the entropy functional on the state space. So I will not go detail to, to this direction because explaining this definition may take uh, many details. 
So in this talk, I want to take another angle to analyze the feature information. Recall that our semi-proof flow denoted by rho t is just the semi-group tt acting on rho, and the feature information is just a negative of the derivative of entropy. If you look back into the original proof of, of Bakery Emery, a key step is that if the rich curvature has a real number lower bound, that will imply the feature information has the exponential control. And for a number that is positive, this means the feature information is exponentially decay. And then by taking antiderivative, then we have the entropy is exponentially decay. When lambda is zero, this is basically saying the fissure information is momentum decreasing. And when lambda is negative, they say the fissure information may grow in, may increasing, but the, its growth is bounded exponentially. So let's think about this inequality of fissure information. Take it, we introduce the following definition. We say the semi-group is lambda fissure monotone, which for real lambda, which we in short, we write lambda fm, if the feature information has the following exponential control. So as we see that if lambda is positive, then this directly apply modify log of inequality and we are down. For lambda is zero or negative, we will need some other help of other conditions. It turns out that we need the following condition of so-called CB return time. That's defined the E tau to be the trace map, which sending every element to trace time's identity. Then the CB return time is defined to be the smallest time T such that the semi-group map subtracting the trace map, the complete bounding norm from L1 to L infinity, the norm is bounded by one half. Then here comes our May tool, May theorem to show modified log of inequality. Suppose this CB return time is finite and we denote it by T0. Then the lambda fission monotonicity, which is this inequality, will imply M lambda, some constant depending on lambda of the modified log of inequality. Here M lambda for lambda equal to zero is just one over T zero. For lambda is negative, it's given by this expression. In particular, if you take lambda, the limit goes to zero, it will recover the zero case. Here I want to mention that this CB return time or this CB norm is not abstract at all. Actually by efforts run theorem, this CB norm from L1 to L infinity is just the operator norm of its kernel. Well, the kernel and the map is related by this partial trace relation. So in some sense, this CB return time is just some heat kernel estimate we want. And the key step in the proof is that this CB return time is actually the half decay time of entropy. So at the time T0, the entropy of rho has to decay at least half. From here, combined with the control of its derivative, we can show the entropy is exponentially decay. So that's the main idea behind this proof. So then there's an immediate application in a classical case, which we can recover the following focal rule result that every heat semi-group on a compact Riemannian manifold satisfy lambda modified log of inequality for some strictly positive lambda. And the proof of that is just combining well-known fact about heat semi-group on the manifolds, on compact manifolds with the, our previous theorem. Basically, since the manifold is compact, there's always some rich curvature lower bound for some real lambda, and that will imply lambda fission monotonicity, which give us uh, one condition we need. And then from the uh, compactness, we also know that Laplacian has spectrum gap, and the heat kernel estimates or the CB and the, the heat semi-groups satisfy the following dimension estimates. And combining two and three, we can, we can show the 
CV return time or the just the bounded return time in this case is finite combining with the rich curvature lower bounds by a real lambda that implies some logs, uh, modified logs of inequality where lambda it will be explicitly depending on these parameters. And the next example is a non commutative one. We consider G is a discrete group, LG is the group phonomial algebra, which is the algebra, phonomial algebra generated by the left regular representation on the LT of G, where LT of G is the Hilbert space with also normal basis indexed by the group elements H. And the unitary or the representation unitary is just the left shifting unitary shifting this um, basis by the left group multiplication. And the Fourier multiplier is a map that's sending every this group unitary to a scalar time seed. So our theorem applies for Fourier multiplier is the following. All symmetric quantum Markov semigroup of Fourier multiplier, which Basically, in each multiply, each multiplier is an exponential, uh, exponential uh, factor, and also this semigroup has Fisher monotonicity. Basically, is the zero fm, and also rich curvature bounded by zero. So this rich curvature bounded by zero, if you were in Mars talk earlier today, can be in his definition that's a weak operator bounded by zero. But it can also, it's also holds for the rich curvature lower bounds defined through the equivalence of the geodesic convexity of entropy. Then it's clear that we just need the CB return time finite to have this, the modified lux of inequality. So for that, we need um, some assumption on a function phi g, which is the exponent in the multiplier. First, we need a growth condition that's for some r, this constant cr, which is the summation of all group element g, r to phi at g. We want for some r, some radius, this is finite. And we also assume the spectrum gap is positive. Here, the spectrum gap is just the smallest positive phi g value. And if these two satisfied that we can have the CB return time is finite, and that will combine with our main theorem where it implies the lambda modified logs of the inequality for this explicit constant. To give you a little bit more feeling, this applies for all finite generated group G, where the exponents in a multiplier does not grow more than exponential. Okay. Uh, so finally, I just want to mention um, some other application. So we also find the zero curvature formula, zero curvature phenomena holds for heat semigroup introduced on some quantum groups, including free orthogonal group and the quantum permutation group. And with the heat kernel estimate there, we can show uh, the modified logs of the inequality. And also in finite dimensional example, we find the Schur multiplier has zero curvature and, and the zero and, and the Fisher monotonicity. And in the finite dimension, you always have uh, this CB return time. So that also implies an estimate of the multiplied sublet inequality in the, uh, the constants in, for Schur multiplier. Finally, I just want to mention a natural uh, open problem arise uh, about the Fisher monotonicity is that does every semigroup on matrix algebra has a lambda Fisher monotonicity for some finite lambda? Because we think the, the matrix algebra is like a finite discrete space. I think by compactness is promising to have always have such a constant lambda which may not be positive, but could be some lambda. That will have application to show the entropy decay of general semigroup on matrix algebra, which they have uh, application in quantum information. So that's all I want to say for that. I'd like to thank you.